And welcome into another edition of Spits and Suds. I'm Gavin Spittle of 1053 The Fan. Thank you so much for joining us as the Stars get ready for a two-game set against the Florida Panthers in Finland. And joining us to talk about that and the Stars' first month, he is the host of Locked On Stars podcast, very popular Stars podcast. It's the greatness of Joey Erickson. How are you, my friend? I'm doing good, sir. Just uh, super pumped up about these games over uh, in Finland, taking on the defending cup champs. So it feels like a, a measuring uh, stick uh, contest here for the Stars this weekend. What costume are you wearing as we do this podcast? Um, I currently actually have a Sooners cover up on, if that's okay, <laughs> how I right. could accurately That'll describe do. that. But yeah. that's all I'm rocking with today. I am uh, i don't think I'm going to do any uh, costumes or or, or, or anything uh, like that. But we'll see. We, we still have a lot of time. We have a few hours before those decisions will uh, will be made in concrete. Right. My girlfriend forces me to, <laughs> to get out <laughs> on the town. So <laughs> that's yesterday, probably the, the question. <laughs> we had our company Christmas, we had our company Halloween party and like peer pressure to dress up. And I dressed up as a mime. <laughs> and I would do this podcast as Victory Green. It would not be the best podcast if I couldn't talk. Um, yes. So, yeah. So that was yesterday, dressed up as a uh, a mime, and it was a, a lot of fun. All right. Speaking of having fun, the Stars and mm-hmm. the Panthers having a whale of a week in Finland. It's been terrific. Big deal over there. And, you know, just pulling statistics, getting ready for tomorrow's game, like, I just want Stars fans to know, and I would love to get your feedback, Joey. Like, if mm-hmm. they go 0 and 2, it's okay. You're playing against the defending Stanley Cup champions. If you go 2 and 0, great. But when you look at these teams, obviously, Stars losing out on the Western Conference Finals, the Panthers back to back Stanley Cup appearances, finally get it done. So you have two teams that are showing a track record of success, and then you mm-hmm. move to this year. Stars with a record of seven and two. Panthers seven, three, and one. As far as uh, rank, the Stars are second in the Central with 14 points. Florida first in the Atlantic with 15 points, so equal points, basically. Then you go down to power play. Stars 20.7, Florida 24.1. So not that much difference, probably about a goal. Penalty mm-hmm. kill, Stars. 27 for 29. That's really impressive. 93.1%. But then you look at Florida, 87% on the kill. They're 27 for 31. And in the last 10 games, Stars are 7 and 2. And the Panthers are 6, 3 and 1. I mean, these two teams basically are identical as far as their start and then identical as far as their track record. Granted, Florida did raise the cup, but. That's why I'm not going to be surprised at if one of these teams takes two games or what they're so evenly matched. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be an absolute blast to watch these two teams go at it. And I mentioned this on an episode the other day on Locked on Stars where the Stars are trying to sort of emulate what the Florida Panthers have done over the past few seasons, right? Where Florida is just the perfect makeup of a Stanley Cup champion, right? They have the scoring, they have the superstars, and they have the physicality. And it feels like the moves that the Stars made in the offseason was to sort of emulate what Florida has done over the past few seasons. It's a copy, uh, it's a copycat league. And I feel like Dallas is, is trying to measure up to these teams like the, the Florida Panthers. And, and yeah, they are very, very similar where of course they have some superstars, but it, 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 it doesn't really have that national recognition a, a right. lot of the time. Like Barkovs can be underrated sometimes, even though he's the best two-way center iceman in the game. But man, Florida is so deep at the center position with Lundell and Reinhardt. Yeah. And, you, and, and then you get to Barkov, right? It's like, man, they are so deep. And, and Dallas has some good center depth as well. But two teams with similar makeups, like really good back ends. They have really, really good depth up front. And yeah, they have some damn good net minders. So these two teams are going to clash and I don't think it could be in a better place than it is in Finland. So I'm, I'm, uh, I'm absolutely stoked to watch these two go at it. And, and yeah, as you mentioned, like stars going to, it's like, yeah, okay. Like that kind of makes sense. 
Florida's a damn good team. <laughs> like that's going to happen. Sometimes you're um, you're going to get beat, but um, hopefully Dallas can take you know maybe two, three points out of the possible four, and you'll feel very good about coming back home. Yeah, you mentioned Sam Reinhart, and I think Stars fans tomorrow and Saturday will look at Kachuk or look at Bobrovsky. But that's mm-hmm. yeah, I didn't even name. mention him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's a name Stars fans have to keep an eye on. Sam Reinhart is on a tear this year, sixteen points. Uh, currently leads the Panthers. Uh, that's a guy that it's a name that we know of, but you know, honestly, Joey, not like a name that is mentioned as far as top tier and this year he's playing that top tier center level yeah he uh he obviously had the breakout season with with 57 goals yep. a year ago and uh, luckily for him it came in a contract year so yeah. <laughs> he he got paid and and no you you're you're right he's sort of been a guy that was always like okay well yeah he can give you you know 20 to 30 goals a year he's a good depth piece uh you know maybe uh within your top 6 or really even in your your top 9 and now he's established himself as like a really elite goal scorer in this league i mean he's got three straight season with uh with 30 plus goals. Yeah. He has a knack for finding the back of the net and he does a lot of damage on the power play too. He's the guy to look out for. He had 27 power play goals a year ago and that led the entire national hockey league, not just the Panthers. So you you speak of this very dangerous power play for Florida have to keep an eye out um, on, on number 16. Um, And yeah, well you got Barkov and Reinhardt kind of that dynamic duo. Now you add Barkov into the mix. Who's healthy. So yeah, (laughs) it'll be uh, it'll be a challenge. And I love what you said about emulating because you look at the Florida Panthers and they had a few years back that season where they just were on a tear offensively, mm. but then got the number one team in the, in the league. Yeah, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm. And then they got stymied in the playoffs. And one of the things that they did was bring in grit and Kachuk was a big part of that. And then you look at the mm-hmm. stars team and high scoring, but I always thought that like if the offense you know, if the skill set kind of goes away from a game, what else do you have? And now I feel as though the stars can counter with some grit and physicality. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I think it's I think it's worked out better than than I thought in the first uh, month of the season. I, I said this as well after the Boston game. I was worried. My concerns were the stars would kind of almost look like Boston with some of the, the acquisitions they made where it seemed like Boston was big. Yeah. And they had some physicality, but they just seemed to step behind and they took a lot of penalties. Uh, they they lead the league in uh, in penalties taken so far. But, you know, Dallas has some pretty good mobility. And, you know, even players like Brendan Smith, who have gotten a cup of coffee here at the early going, yeah. like, yeah, he may not be your your perfect, you know, d- defenseman in the National Hockey League at this point in time. But he, he he gave them some physicality in that game against Edmonton. He laid that big hit. I can't remember who it was on, but it kind of sparked Dallas. And it's like, OK, yeah, you're not going to be this, you know, breakout, you know, one pass breakout kind of defenseman. That's OK. But bring what you bring to the game and bring physicality. If that's what you do, give it to us. And you've seen that with Labushkin and even Dumba, like he's out there Mm -hmm. throwing his weight around and that's good. Use that strength to your game and use it within this star system. And they're, they're still trying to figure it out, which I think is a great thing where, you know, Dallas is still tinkering, even with their, their forward lines they are still tinkering a bit, trying to find some uh, consistency, but as head coach Pete DeBoer mentions a lot in the early going, like, it, yeah, we're not playing our best, but we're still finding to win games, and you got to get points in the bank. Um, that way, you can start peaking at the right time, and you're not trying to fight yourself into a playoff spot like where you know, kind of Nashville and Colorado are now at, where you know that the, it, it, you know, another few weeks of you know them kind of teetering, you know, between 500, it makes it really, really tough to play from behind. And the Stars have done great, especially under Pete DeBoer. They've gotten off to very, very good starts, and that's the same here this season. You know, I'm wondering if we might see our first tussle of the season, and Stars don't get in many tussles, um, one of the fewest in the league last year. But Mm -hmm. when you are playing on a big stage, and Finland will be a big stage, so adrenaline will be amped up. This is similar to the players like a winter classic. Yes. And you have two games in a row against the Florida Panthers, so obviously you're ramped up because they're the cup champs. And they do Mm -hmm. come with some physicality, you know, as soon as that nuance of, 
you know, playing on a national stage kind of wears down. I think it might get a little chippy specifically in that second game. No, I, th- I think you're you're right. I guess if I was a betting man, uh, Kulikov, uh, Ben, haven't they gone Ooh, a, a, like a few that. times in yeah, years past? Yeah. I think they, Good I think prediction. they faced off twice. Yeah. So maybe maybe we get a trilogy here. <laughs> yep. Um, in Finland, I I don't. Uh, I'll say this: I don't think Barkov and Hans are going to go. Gavin, <laughs> <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't think Nils Lundqvist is going to drop the mitts or? <laughs> that would be something. Be, hey, you got to find your way into a lineup somehow. Yeah, so, well, uh, maybe... that's, that is true. And that does lead yeah. me to an excellent podcast you had the other day. And your podcast, Locked on Stars, was based on, in the first month, surprises and disappointments thus far. Who did you yes. have? So my my surprise of the the season so far, I went with uh, with two defensemen. My surprise was Ely Labushkin, mm-hmm. and some of this has to do with expectations, right? So you know, I wasn't the highest on Labushkin, but I think he's he's been an excellent fit, especially on the PK where. Him and Lindell have been absolutely superb. And you yep. mentioned the numbers at the top of today's show. Like, they are a big part of that. Like, Lindell plays more PK minutes than anybody. And, you know, Lindell and him have sort of become the the Lindell and Hockenpah from, from years past, if not better. So, I think Labushkin's been um, a, a great fit. Um, and, and yeah, he, he throws his weight around too for uh, a smaller guy. Um, I, I think he's, he's been fantastic. My disappointment was, was Miro. Um, and look, I'm, I'm a, as high on Miro as anybody in this entire world, but man, three points in the first nine games. And he's had some, some really rocky, rocky contests so far. And it looks like he's starting to find his rhythm here recently. He's got a, a you know, a couple points now in the last few games. So I'm, I'm not worried about him, but Man, I, I was I was hoping like this would be the year he gets off to an incredible start, and it's like okay, like he he's gonna take this Norse uh, trophy by by the by the bull, uh, by the horns of the bull. And it just, it hasn't really happened yet. So those are my, uh, surprising and, and disappointing players. What, what says you, I'd love to hear your answers. So I don't know if it's a surprise based on watching him in preseason, but I remember Sean Shapiro and I were talking about this and we both agreed Nils Lundqvist deserved to be in the top six. And oh, yes. I yes. think that when you look back at what happened in the playoffs, and then you start to see, granted, Dumba had an injury, but Nils Lundqvist's minutes are starting to tick up, and mm-hmm. I think he has been really good. And I think defensively, um, he certainly improved. We know his puck-carrying ability, but to me, I no longer worry when Nils Lundqvist is on the ice, and I know yeah. they still protect him, but we also have to realize that they protected Hanley, and uh, you know they protect others when you know you're always going to protect let's just say your sixth defenseman a little bit yeah uh, as well so i would put that in a surprise and actually glad category um Mm -hmm. because they're giving him a chance and i think he is basically making the case that i can't come out of the lineup or if you want to take me out of the lineup it's based on giving me a rest and that's it so uh, i would say that I think Mason Marchment um, has also had a good year. Started mm-hmm. out, I still get frustrated with his penalties, Joey, um, at <laughs> yes, times. <yeah. laughs> but I have to realize he's that guy that is going to yeah. draw as many. Um, so I think he's been nice. And Matt Duchesne has been a really, really nice. Uh, uh, I don't want to say I'm surprised, but you know what? I mean, it's almost like, hey, hold my beer on year one. Here comes year two, Matt Duchesne. <laughs> yes, um, yeah. And that line just continues to be, um, you know, consistent. Disappointing wise. I said it on the podcast on post game. You're right. You nailed it. Four needs yeah. to be talked about. That doesn't mean number four is bad. That doesn't mean number yes, four is yes. not your top <laughs> defenseman and people have to interpret it correctly. But we cannot talk about Miro Haskinen in the Norris category with, you know, with the offense not being there as of yet. Yeah. So I mm. would love, because everyone talks about free Miro, free Miro, free Miro, put him on the right side, put him on his strong side, put him on his strong side. And so we've freed Miro with Dumba 
and we'd put him on his strong side, Joey, but mm-hmm. we haven't seen the results as of yet, but he is seemed to be coming around in the last couple of games. So that would be the case. Uh, I would have said Jamie Ben, but he had a real strong performance the other night. I think mm-hmm. Jamie does a lot, you know, on the ice. I'll tell you another one that we are spoiled with Wyatt Johnston, just looking at <laughs> yes. his numbers the other day. And I'm like, can we really be disappointed at that? He's just not scoring goals, but he's putting up points. It's kind of like Jason Robertson last year. People are like, what's wrong with Jason Robertson? And then you look, it's like, well, I don't know. He's leading the team in points. Yeah, again, again, right? Uh, no, I, I think why it's in that category. He's just been a bit unlucky early. I, yeah. feel like, I feel like the puck hasn't settled for him a lot in that that save, what was it, Mrazic made on him? Oh. Uh, you know, or, oh, that was an incredible, incredible stop. And yeah, I was, I was thinking in the first five games of the season, I was like, I haven't feel like I, I, I noticed Wyatt a ton, but he had five points, and I'm like, okay, well, maybe this is just the year where you know Wyatt's going to go uh, very quiet about his business. But you know, to to get back to to Miro a bit. I would say I think he just needs to free himself a little bit yeah. as well, and and like and and you mentioned the caveat, like yes, Miro does so many things that do not show up on the on the stat sheet, and and we will forever highlight those, and I will forever forever love him for that. But sometimes it's like, man, I wish he had a little more Harley in him, and I know that's not his instinct. Right, I know it's not his instinct. Hopefully, he can get to that, and and to to touch on Neil's. Uh, a bit as well because you know I spoke about him the other week and I said it's not really necessarily the the plays that even Niels is making it's the ones he's not making anymore and I think that says a lot yep. about his growth and um I think you you make a great argument that that Niels has been the star's most consistent and even best defenseman this season so far I think I'd give Lindell that nod yeah, just would. for what he's done on the penalty kill but him and Niels I think are, are right there for the contributions and the production that we've seen especially Especially defensively. It just I mean, how many times this season, Gavin, have you seen Niels Lundqvist like bury a forward in front of his own net? Yeah. <laughs> like 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 three or four times this year. Right. Like, we never saw that. And right. it's like he's 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 stepping up physically, which is a great sign. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And yeah, you're right, going back to Lindell. The reality is we all had questions in the offseason because he became you just saw a difference in Essa Lindell when Chris Tanif came. And yeah. then you wondered Chris Tanef's departure. How is that going to affect Lindell? Then he signs mm-hmm. the contract. I thought it was a very fair contract uh, for yeah. both sides. Wanted to stay in Dallas. Dallas wanted him. And I mean, he's certainly proven um, his consistency, uh, which is terrific. And granted lost Tanef, who's a terrific defenseman, but you know, David Castillo wrote an interesting article as far as, are the stars actually better? And, yeah. you know, you do lose that TANF, which will be interesting come playoff time, and you can pick up another piece. However, it just seems as though the depth is different from other years in that if you lose one of these defensemen like you lost Dumba, it, you no longer have to hit the panic button. Yeah, and 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 we've already seen that here early <laughs> with with Dumba that went down. So I I, I think I, the depth is certainly better. And and right, you just need guys that can eat up minutes. That was that was the problem, especially in the postseason when they were kind of rotating five D men. It's like you know you're playing Neils like five minutes yeah. a night in the yeah. postseason. Like and these are these are hard minutes. Hard. Like like Miro and, and and Harley are playing. It's like you just you can't get through a postseason. That way, so I, I think you, you know the stars. They they went. It's like okay, we 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 can't get Tanev back. Too much money, too much term. Like let's let's get some bodies in here that can play roles for us and can chew up minutes. And you know we've seen Dumba. He's kind of around seventeen minutes a night. Labushkin is playing a bit more here. Um, for the first time in his career, which is is good. And as you said, I think Stars will probably want to pick up another piece. Possibly that could be Bischel, which would be very exciting mm-hmm. if he's ready to go. But even then, you can still add at the deadline. And yeah, Dallas probably wants a you know a Chris Tanev type. You can always use those type of players, right? Or uh, you know a Ben Lovejoy from from years past. Uh, those yeah. those guys that can come in and just you know give you solid minutes in the postseason. Because I think that will be the question with Niels too, right? Like, okay, he's made a he's he's elevated his play now in, in the regular season, and hopefully that continues for you know this full eighty two games. But what is he going to look like come postseason time? Because we all know it's a different animal. 
Um, and you know, he had some issues last season to say the least. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, that's still a question. And you could even toss that on Harley a bit with what we saw. He was not the same player. Not the so, same player. Uh, yeah, there, there are some questions from a lot of these defensemen, which makes it kind of fun. <laughs> um, to, to be fair, it gives us some talking points <laughs> for right. sure. But, um, uh, yeah, they've, they've looked, they've looked, They've pleasantly surprised me, is what I say. Uh, is what I'll say in the first nine games this season. Yeah, well, even the fact that you can call Petrovic up, and you know he's a wily veteran, so he can sit. Mm-hmm. And the fact that you have Bishel just kind of in an incubator down in in uh, in Texas, and he's cooking, and he's cooking with lots of minutes, yeah. and he's still figuring out the North American game. So you're right; you have the potential post all-star break when the salary cap eases even more if there's no injury to bring him up like you did Harley and we've seen when you the Jim Nil probably to to a fault what many will say cautious approach I think Jim Nil yeah. has an argument when you look at what's happened <laughs> with Robertson what's happened with Ottinger what's happened with Harley and now putting down Bischel, who I think could have easily, you could make an argument that he won a spot, but at the oh, same yeah. time, yeah. now you have him playing major minutes down in the AHL on a consistent basis. When he comes mm-hmm. up, he's going to be ready, and that is just going to vault you. Um, and not to mention you have seven con- seven contracts that are one way defensively, so that kind of had <laughs> something to do with it as, as well. I did want to touch on the forwards because one of the things mm-hmm. I've seen, Joey, is a real intent a- after the first few games to show net front presence, get in that dirty area. And I think that's really helping the stars team. Yeah, I think they've, they've been more direct. They they weren't very crisp in, in the first handful of games. And now the last two, you're, you're starting to see them be a bit more connected as like a five man unit. They love to stretch out the ice, right? <laughs> that, that Lindell, like, you know, Hail Mary yeah. pass to the Donov. <laughs> I think it just, it perfectly encapsulate kind of what the stars have been over the past couple of years, or at least what the stars have been under Pete DeBoer. But you know, you, you can't get those all the time. Uh, that, that, that's not how you score the, but, majority of your goals especially um in the postseason but yes guys like Tyler Sagan man he's he got he's so productive when he's in the lineup yeah. it is so unfortunate that he's had some injuries because look he's got four goals in the first six games and he's hit a few pipes as well like he's been great um in the and for him to sort of have to adapt his game it's just he he's he's grown so much in just these past you know three years but marchment right I mean just a guy that's direct he goes to the net um, Stan Coven's like a little water bug out there. God, you can't keep your eyes off him when he's playing, getting the eyes, getting in front of the eyes of the net minder, taking that away. I, th- I think you're absolutely right. And, and the stars have bared down a bit more. Um, and, and maybe that'll help spur their offense a, a bit. Cause we all know how special they are with their speed and they can be great off the rush, but um, we're, we're starting to see a, a bit, a, a bit better production from inside the the blue line in the offensive zone and getting pucks towards the net and yeah getting bodies getting tips and deflections you're going to store a lot of greasy goals it doesn't have to be pretty right um the goal that that Robertson scored I believe it was in Washington it may have been Hintz but I think it was Robertson like that's where Robertson needs to score his goals right at the top of the crease like yes he's got a great wrist shot and everything but he can get to that top yep yeah get to the puddle it, the puck finds you a bit more. It's not a coincidence. Yep. It's not a coincidence. The puck will find you. And um, I think that's a, that's a great sign. Hopefully the stars can uh, keep that up here over the, the next few weeks. You know, interesting to see these next couple of games because you have Maverick Bork and healthy scratch coming off mm-hmm. an injury, but at the same time, who would you replace? Um, because I think Dodonov's been playing terrific. Um, yes. And mm-hmm. so, you know, there's a guy that, you know, can play on all four lines. Uh, So it's interesting to see how they'll work the lines in the next few games. And I I know they're trying to get Maverick Bork time, but it's just a situation where, you know, him, Oscar Beck have to realize, you know, you have to fight your way into the lineup and you have to, you know, honestly either put points on the board or make an impact defensively. Yeah, I I can't make an argument to take anybody out. Yeah, Gavin. like I like Sam Steele and Blackwell have been phenomenal. phenomenal. Like exactly what you want on your fourth line, and yeah, Beck. I mean, he's only gotten better each and every game. So even he's a tough guy to take out. And and to be fair, you know, Beck is almost the 
I feel like he's probably a coach's dream. <laughs> like he just he just plays that kind of you, you know zero sum game where it's like he's not going to give up anything. He may not add a ton of offensive production, but like I said, he's not going to give up a ton of, a ton in, in front of his own net. And I think you could say the same about Maverick Bork as well. Yeah, you would like to see him be a, a bit more involved offensively. Hopefully Bork will start to find the confidence and play his way into that line with whether that's going to be Ben and Stankoven or Ben and Johnson. I, I think that's the hope for the coaching staff is that Bork will eventually upgrade to that to that line and then he can start to find some rhythm offensively. But it's not like Bork has been atrocious either, right? It's just he, he's he's trying to catch up to the NHL style, um, and that is a big jump from the AHL. Like, he lit it up. So, you know, yeah, I just it's it really is hard to, to take somebody out of the lineup. And, you know, Steele takes faceoffs. He's good on the PK. Beck, you know, has an argument there as well. So... Man, yeah, it, it's it, yeah. I guess the stars have a good problem, right? Where it's like, oh, well, you just you have so many good forwards, <laughs> like you got to yeah. play your way into it. So, um, it's kind of like a Neil's thing. It's like, well, you got to force the staff to be like, okay, we can't take him out because of his play. We just want to take him out because he needs a rest. Yeah, absolutely. And you also have a great coaching matchup with Pete DeBoer and Paul Maurice, uh, two wily veterans as far as the coaching ranks who have amazing respect for each other. So that's going to be fun as well. mm Hmm. Yeah, no, the, I think this will be uh, these will be great stylistic teams uh, to watch, and I feel like the Stars have gotten hammered by the Panthers over the last <laughs> few years. They've had some stinkers, at least down in Florida. But um, I feel like with the pageantry uh, of being in Finland and, and all that, I man, I I, I think the barn's going to be rocking there. Um, yeah, you know, you've seen the stuff coming out of. Uh, and the stars at uh, the Yokerit, which is the the team that uh, Essel and Dell co mm-hmm. and just the it's like that soccer atmosphere. They're just screaming yeah. and chanting all game. Uh, it's just it's going to be an absolute blast. I'm just giddy talking about it, so I uh, can't wait for it to kick off tomorrow. Yeah, you know, it's, it, there is a side of you. It's like ah, oh, one p.m. I mean, Saturday ten a.m. is fine, um, <laughs> yeah. but at the same time, you're just like, oh man, I just want to so concentrate tomorrow and and just <laughs> hunker down and watch Stars hockey. But the great thing about Victory Plus. For those of you um, that will watch on there, no worries uh, because the game will be on right after you get home. So, you know, just press play and watch it and stay off social media and you can watch it fresh, (laughs) um, I guess. It is exciting. Um, The time change is too bad because I think it would be cool and it will be on NHL Network. But, you know, these two teams right now would be an awesome featured game. Um, oh yeah, you know, and, and so that's one thing that's a little tough. And the other thing is, is that you don't get to see the Florida Panthers come to the American airlines center. Uh, so that's a little tough as well, but those are just such minor things because tomorrow and Saturday is great for the global game and, uh, really exciting that both of these teams are playing at the highest level in the NHL right now. So you're right. It's going to be fun. I don't know. You know, I don't think anyone can call. What's going to happen in these next two games? Like I said, one team could sweep the other. They could split. You know, who knows? Because they're that evenly matched. Yeah, two. I mean, two top five teams right now in the NHL based uh, on points. I know the uh, Panthers have a couple of games in hand right now on, on the Stars. But, yeah, you're watching, you know, what two are probably pretty top contenders for the yeah. Stanley Cup. I, I think a lot of people would have Florida and Dallas in that conversation, a potential Stanley Cup meeting here down down the road. So yeah, uh, it, it'll be um, it'll be a, a ton of fun, that's for sure. So uh, yeah, man, c- can't wait, can't wait to see if the the stars can uh, pick up a, a few wins. Um, I mean, gosh, I mean, you'll you'll feel extremely good as a Stars fan if yes. you pick up two wins uh, against the Panthers, especially when you know you're going to go against Bobrovsky one of these days. Yeah, especially too when you look at the division; those are two gauntlet divisions: the Atlantic and the Central. So both mm-hmm. teams, you know, when you're at the top of the Central Division, you're a really good team. And when you're at the top of the Atlantic, <laughs> I mean, for those of you that don't know in the Atlantic, I mean, Stars saw Buffalo and saw what happened. But you mm-hmm. also have Ottawa in there. You have an up-and-coming Detroit in there. You have Boston. You have Tampa. Obviously, Florida. So a lot of good teams in the Atlantic. And then we've seen what's happened in the Central Division, and keep your eye on Nashville because they're coming. And the start that Winnipeg has had is amazing, yeah. Joey. I mean, just their goal differential is just off the charts. It's like so unlike Winnipeg. 
Um, so excited to see those matchups. Minnesota's playing really well. I think Chicago's much improved from last year. Um, they gave the Stars a, a little bit uh, the other night coming off a of back-to-back. So mm-hmm. it's just a lot of fun, and I, I honestly don't think Colorado's going to stay toward the bottom either. So, um, y- yeah. yeah. Just, just uh, two it would be a- good divisions. Yeah, Colorado, I, at this point in time, be a miracle if they're in a playoff spot by Thanksgiving <laughs> with all the injuries um, they, they've yeah. had. I actually did a power rankings episode um, today, uh, just the Western Conference, and I have Winnipeg number one. And I said, like, you, there's some things you can nitpick about Winnipeg, you know, in years past about, well, they're scoring, you know, they don't have a ton of depth. But this year, I mean, they're just blowing teams out of the oh. water. Um, and it helps to have Helen Buck, of course. Well, absolutely. You know, Minnesota was a team that I thought was going to get back in the conversation. So I'm um, good to see. And I know you, you're a huge fan of that Utah hockey club <laughs> that had a big win yesterday. So, <laughs> hey, they're fun to watch. Word, I'll word give you that. Spreads, they are right? a ton of fun. Word, word <laughs> spread. So, yeah. I, you know what? My first disclaimer came out the other day on the podcast where I mentioned uh, <laughs> prediction was made without knowing the injuries to Dersey and Marino. <laughs> <laughs> which are, yeah, which those, are, those are big term. ones. Those are big ones. But at the same time, you know, I, I just hear my prediction was that I think Utah will be in the mix for a while. Yes, card. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that's and, fair. Yeah, it's fair. <laughs> so, yeah, so that is awesome that you brought that up. That is a terrific callback. So, yes. Uh, and someone actually tweeted me the other day and said, when Utah plays Dallas, who are you going to root for? And I'm like, of course yeah. I'm going to root for Dallas. I'm not, I'm not like pro Utah hockey club. It was just. <laughs> It was just something I threw out there because I just think they have the makings. And I, yeah, I mean, I, how could you not be excited about that? Yes. Yeah. I, that, like, come on. <laughs> no, they're fun. And when you all of a sudden go from, you know, is the plane working? Can we take off? Which hotel are we <laughs> staying in this time? Oh, we're back home and playing in a yeah. 5,000 seat arena that's college built. Um, so uh, the locker rooms aren't even NHL certified and just no. all kinds of stuff to a sold out barn to a first class owner to being treated unreal. That's going to give you a little adrenaline push. So, yeah, they've, they've certainly had the, the new the new franchise push a little bit, which um, is good to see. It's good for for them to to be good. And it's not a huge surprise. I mean, you know, Arizona last year was a team that was yes. in the playoff like conversation yeah. in January. And yeah. then their, their net minder got hurt and everything kind of tailspinned um, from there. But, yeah, the, the Central's going to be a lot of fun because, yes, if Colorado and Nashville don't figure it out, like you're going to get some new teams now yeah. that, that are going to be in, in the conversation. But I, Nashville, I think, was kind of expected. Like they're trying to figure some things out. So um, hopefully they kind of get it back to back uh, back on track um, as well. But, yeah, that's, that Central's a, a lot of fun. So, I mean, Star's going to have their work cut out for them, especially if Winnipeg's going to keep this up, man. They just don't go way i guess no absolutely all right it's a terrific podcast stars fans it's called locked on stars and the host is joey erickson doing a great job and you can get a daily stars fixed um just search online for locked on stars it's also featured on youtube um so you can get the audio or you can get the video version you are a beast my friend i'm looking forward to uh having uh, you on more well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I'm going to have to get you on Locked on Stars, maybe, maybe next week or the, uh, in the near future, because it's been too long. I think we, we yeah. chopped it up in the summer. So you, you got to get back on. And I know many of my listeners love to 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 talk with you as well. And I made sure to to plug today's episode on, on I think, my episode of, of Locked on Stars. So the oh, fans cool. know to come over and uh, to come over and listen to us chop it up. So thanks again for, for having me on. I mean, anytime we can talk Stars hockey, it's a good time, especially with my my former boss, man, my former bench <laughs> boss at the well, 105.3, baby. You know what? Man, 105.3's had some interesting stuff over the past few weeks. Yeah, uh, few you weeks, don't huh? say, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, it's been, uh, <laughs> it's been really interesting. That's what people, when like I talk to them, they want to know about Jerry Jones. And they oh, want sure. They want my stars' opinion. Those are the two factors that people <laughs> that people want to talk about. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. We certainly miss you around these uh, hallways. But uh, so glad uh, you're doing well. And I say to all stars fans, one of the reasons we started Spits and Suds is to create more stars content. And since you have taken over Locked On Stars, you've certainly done that as well. Um, it's not about competition. It's about growing this great game in Dallas, Fort Worth, and you're a big part of it. So thank you, my friend. Well, thank you. And, and amen to that. That's, uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, you know, I, I grew up in Dallas and, you know, just was, you know, 
through and through a, a hockey dude. I, you know, I went to school to, to go to a division one hockey school, <laughs> not, not the division one football. And I mean, I, I know you, you love sharing the game with others do, um, yeah. and trying to teach people too. like, uh, that's, that's part of it of, of growing the game. And it's just, I I'm so blessed to be able to do locked on stars. I really am every single day. And just to get to talk about a team I love, like, I mean, how could you get better than that? Yeah. You know, it's really interesting. And I, I love, you know, when we get like, like feedback uh, as I'm pulling it up right now, just for a second, because it, it's kind of interesting because I, I got this uh, tweet yesterday from Chris Barnard, who's a, uh, a big uh, uh, stars and spits and suds listener. And mm-hmm. the, the fan who tried to open up Mookie Betts glove is Austin Capo Bianco. So Gronk, um, on television says, interesting story. He was actually on the Arizona hockey team. So Chris <laughs> Barnard reached out to me and said, any relation to the Texas stars player? <laughs> yeah. So I responded, uh, Kyle Copabianco is currently with the stars in Finland and he's from Mississauga, which is in Ontario, a suburb of Toronto. So he's not related, but he does okay. have a brother named Tony Capobianco, who played four years at Canisius and a few games in both the ECHL and AHL. Oh, very nice. Yeah, and Kyle's grandfather was a really good CFL player in the Canadian Football League. Oh, wow. So yeah, it's awesome. Like, so you're able to go down this rabbit hole about Kyle Capobianco's family, and they're all athletes. So it's really interesting. Wow. So it was a great question. And uh, I love doing those deep dives and, and, you know, helping listeners out, but also finding out for myself. So how cool is that? So uh, thank you to the listeners and, uh, you know, reach out to Joey. Um, Give your, uh, it's Joey the Jet, right? On Twitter? Yeah, Joey the Jet 19. You can find me on the X thing. (laughs) Absolutely. So ask your questions to uh, Joey and obviously listen to his Stars podcast called Locked On Stars. Thanks again, my friend. Appreciate it. You have a great day. Yeah, absolutely. And that's going to do it for another edition of Spits and Suds. And of course, we'll give you a recap coming up of the finish games. It's going to be awesome. Dallas, Stanley Cup champion, Florida Panthers. We're looking forward to it right here on Spits and Suds. Have a great day, everyone.